Captain Sean Banks here from the Lure Jensen Pro Staff. We're sitting here today talking to you guys uh, about our new Cyclone Flasher. New Cyclone uh, came out this year, developed uh, primarily right from the Coyote Flasher. The Coyote Flasher has been tried and proven for years and years on the West Coast and uh, the Great Lakes. And this year we've come out with the Cyclone. Cyclone based off the same profile, except we've added the Cyclone blade in the middle. The flasher itself has high quality swivels, all welded rings, and on the back side, a very easy to connect and disconnect your favorite meat rigs in a matter of seconds with a V-chain swivel. So the Cyclone flasher, guys, uh, the reason why it was developed was to give anglers some, a bit of an edge over other anglers that are on the water. And if you have a Cyclone flasher, it gives you a few different things. One, it adds turbulence to the water, as that flasher is rotating, it adds turbulence, an extra bit of flash, as well as a bit more vibration. Another added feature on the Cyclone flasher are the fins located on the back. There's dual fins. Those fins guarantee that that flasher will roll at all variable speeds, from 1.9 miles per hour all the way up to three miles per hour. So we talked quickly, guys, about the quick disconnect and the rigs that you can put on. So different rigs with a quick connect allows you to switch from a spoon rig, which is just a, a naked spoon in behind your flasher, roughly 48 inches to 60 inches in behind, all the way to a meat rig with a three fly or a Twinkie rig, like we like to call it. Uh, most times we'll run them about six feet long and then all the way to just a naked bait head uh, being, you know, your lure Jensen bait head or an anchovy head that we can put in behind. Depending on what those fish want, the Cyclone Flasher gives you that opportunity depending on the fish's choice of what they want that day. The Cyclone comes in a, two sizes, the 11 inch as well as the 8 inch, and they come in a variety of colors from Everglow finishes with your UV tapes all the way to your UV finishes and your popular West Coast colors and Great Lakes colors as well. So for most of our popular colors, the color choices in your flasher, Lure Jensen also makes a matching Dipsy Diver as well. A lot of people always ask why, why the two different sizes and a lot of times my response to them is we like to use an 11 inch a lot of times deep down deep where we're trying to get as much noise and attention as possible when we're trying to draw those fish in from all over. Once we start moving into skinnier water or higher in the water column we don't need to draw that much attention because the fish most times are already there feeding. So with all this talk about the cyclone flasher don't forget about the original coyote. You know, you can put one of them out on the same morning that you put your cyclone out and let the fish do the talking. They're gonna dictate what they want that morning. Do they want more flash? Do they want something a little more subtle? So the fish will dictate to you what they want that day. The cyclone guys, we use it everywhere in our spread, right from our downriggers to our dipsy divers, both wire and braid, to our copper lines and our leg core. So when we run the cyclones on our downriggers, guys, we like to use a 10 and a half foot mooching rod. That's my personal preference. The 10 and a half Lure Jensen mooching rod allows us to bring big fish to the boat much faster. On that rod, we'll run 25 pound suffix line monofilament. And we would like to have that monofilament there on the rigger because of the stretchability of it. It allows for a little bit more forgiveness while those fish are running, head shaking and carrying on. The lead off the ball, it really varies depending on water clarity, water color, and how deep we're fishing our, our flashers uh, in our meat rigs. As a given, I'd say 10 feet on a real tough, clear water day, you might be stretching your flashers and meat rigs out to 25, even 50 feet. If you're fishing very skinny water, same thing. You might not wanna get, you might wanna get things further away from the boat. People also ask, Sean, how far behind the dipsy, how big of a lead should we be running? My common answer, is your rod length. And what that does is allows you to reel your dipsy diver to your rod tip, and if you're fishing by yourself, at least now you can reach with your net and pull back with your rod. One very, very important thing when you're running your dipsies and you're choosing a reel to run on your dipsies, you need a line counter reel. I'm gonna repeat, you need a line counter reel. The line counter will help you accurately measure the depth that you're fishing at. Not necessarily the exact depths, but what it does allow you to do is replicate success. If you catch a fish at 127 back, it allows you to put that diver back in the same place where you had success before. 
So we've talked about downriggers, we've talked about dipsy divers. What else do we have? We have our leg cores and our copper lines. Let's start off with leg core. Leg core is a metered line and it comes in multiple colors. Leg core will sink between five and seven feet for every color that you let out. So if you're running a seven color, you should be roughly 35 feet down. It will vary depending on what you're using, such as a spoon, which creates less resistance in the water compared to a flasher, which creates more resistance in the water, elevating that line up a touch higher. The next uh, approach or technique we're gonna talk about, guys, is copper. I run all my coppers on a 55 series reel. Every single one of them, even if it was a very short copper, like a 50, we'll still run it on a 50, uh, 55 series reel. Uh, with our coppers, we run them with 300 feet of backing, and depending on how much copper you put on that reel and everything in between, all the way to 600 feet. So when we get out there, we've talked about downriggers, we've talked about dipsy divers, and we talked about lead core and copper lines. So what do we do with all these rods? Well, our goal is to create a spread throughout the water column, depending on the region and area that you're fishing. For example, on Lake Ontario, we're allowed two rods per person. If we have three people on the boat, that means that we can run six rods. My personal preference, if we had six, three people on the boat, we're running six rods, we're gonna run two downriggers, we're going to run two dipsy divers, one on each side of the boat, and then we're going to put our planer boards out to even widen their spread that much more. That on one side we may deploy copper, the other side leg core, and depending on what those fish are choosing that day, copper, leg core, we may deploy a second copper, pull the leg core out, put a second copper in, and vice versa. Each morning when we leave the dock and we set up, I put a, quite a variety out there, various color patterns, and I let the fish dictate to us what we're gonna be using that day. I can't force the fish to choose you know, what I'm using, but most mornings, they're gonna pick a certain color, certain pattern, whether it be a three fly, a naked bait head, a single spoon, they dictate to us. So having variety in your spread every morning when you go out will allow you to quickly and easily find out what those fish want on any given day. So guys, just a few little tips. Um, when you're out there, really pay attention to what's going on on your boat. Um, when you're having success, you know, the bend in your diver rods, uh, the angle that your downrigger ball, the cable is in the water when you're enjoying success. A lot of times, you know, you'll be going uh, eastbound and you're getting a pile of bites. You turn around and you start going westbound and all of a sudden those bites deplete in, in drastic numbers. So a lot of times it's just attention to the small details and a lot of times it's the, the currents that you don't see on the surface but are down below. Uh, a couple things that could help you out would be a fish hawk and one of the, what that does, a fish hawk allows you to read speed at the depth of your cannonball. There's a probe located on your cannonball, it sends a signal back up to the unit above and gives you an accurate depiction of what's happening down below. So if you don't have a fish hawk, uh, make sure you're uh, alternating your speeds between say 2.4 and 2.7 until you find that zone where those fish really want to go. You could even go a little bit more between 2.2 and 3 miles an hour until you start triggering those fish to bite. Once you find that speed, maintain that in the current direction you're going. If you turn and you're not getting bit again, once again, increase, decrease speed to find that zone in that speed where those fish are biting. 